Oh, hi. Hello. Didn't see you there. Now, today I am doing quite a different video from my usual antics because uh, there's very few cars that come along that annoy me as much as this one right here. The Aston Martin DBS Superleggera. Now, this is going to be quite controversial because I know there's a load of Aston Martin fanboys out there just from James Bond and the other half are just going to be from uh, believing that Aston Martins are beautiful, which they are, but I've got a big list of problems with this car and, well, let's go through it, shall we? Point one. The looks. Now, when you see this vehicle, it looks stunning from the rear up to the back of the door. From the door onwards, in my opinion, it is hideous. It is bloated. It is literally trying to retain itself without any sort of design cues that will initiate any uniqueness. Because, I mean, I know it's got a massive engine, but is there any need to have a grill bigger than Titan? I mean, look at that thing. The front bumper is non-existent due to the fact that it's there simply to accommodate the front grill. There is nothing else there. And, you know, the vents really, you know, you've got double vents. You've got one in the sides, you've got one in the hoods. And you've got the stupid curvy roof thing. And they put on an optional spoiler, which is... Just, mm, it's just annoying. The back, don't get me wrong, the back looks good. You know, the printed Aston Martin logo is clean. You know, it looks nice. So I'll give it that. But for the rest of it, it's just over bloated. Point two, the instrument binnacle. Now, inside this Aston Martin, it's not hideous, it looks nice. But, again, it has so many flaws. First off, the square steering wheel. Whose idea thought it would be a good idea to have a square steering wheel when they are literally the most stupidest things you can use? I don't mind Lamborghini steering wheels because they're only bottom, flat out of the bottom like this one is here. But the rest of the steering wheel needs to be round so that it's okay to grab. This is so uneven to grab. It's just ridiculous. Yet, yeah, up there, you still got the entertainment system from Volvo. That isn't changing. You've got the usual park and drive buttons down there, which are okay. I have no problem with that. The biggest problem I have is when you start it up. So when you start it up, Yes, it sounds nice and stuff like that, right? But look at the instrument binnacle, right? I miss the analog instrument binnacle where you had actual working dials and you had actually working gauges because a digital dash, right? Audi has done it right. With the new R8s and the new TTs, they have done it right where it is one big screen and it alters to fit what is currently on it, whether you want the speedo more pronounced, whether you've got a GPS, whether you've got anything else more important than what you're doing other than the focus of rev range and speed on your instrument binnacle. But if you look here, the instrument binnacle is simply to accommodate the digital screens. You can have nothing else there. You literally get the digital screens which, in my opinions, are nowhere near as gorgeous as the start of it, of the analog dials that were there, how they moved opposite and equal to one another to create perfect harmony at top speed. Right? Yes, it sounds nice. Okay, but look at the dash. If it's not pretty what you're looking at, 
it's going to be an eyesore. Right? Point three. The engine. Now, I'm not one to cut down on an engine. If it's got the horsepower and performance, I let it speak on performance rather than, you know, oh, it's only got so many cylinders. But this one, I am making that argument because it's got too many cylinders for the performance it's outputting. You get over 700 horsepower with this V12, which, yes, I know is a lot. And I know half of you are going to be saying like, oh, that's a lot of power from a V12 and blah, 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 blah. But let's not forget, it is a twin turbo V12 that is only producing 700 horsepower and just a tiny bit more. Noth nothing amazing. You know, if you stick a twin turbo set on even a Ferrari or a Lambo, you're at least hitting the mid 850s. But in this, you're not. And Aston Martins have always been underpowered, but they've always been beautiful to supplement the fact that... Oh, they've always been beautiful for the fact to supplement the lacking power because you're cruising in something beautiful. You're not on the hard or bleeding edge of performance. But this, it's trying to sell itself as a bleeding edge of performance. And it just isn't. Because that engine is too underpowered for what it is. Point four. The rear seats. Now, I know it looks nice in there. You know, nice and spacious. But, you tell me. Who the bloody hell can fit in those rear seats comfortably and say, you know what, it's quite spacious back here where my head's not being chopped off. And I actually feel comfortable. End. Point five. The boot. You buy a car this expensive. Why is it big enough for golf clubs? When I buy a car like this, I do not want it to hold golf clubs. The name. The DBS Super Legera, right? Now let's break that down. The old DBS was absolutely stunning. You had a naturally aspirated 6 litre V12, 550 horsepower, special design tyres, it looked nice, it drove hard. Yes, it had its foibles, but it's melted into the distance of the magnificence that it is. But this just isn't. And it annoys me. Second part of that name is Superleggera. Now, Superleggera in Italian means super light. Now, this car is anything but super light. And if you break it down even further, you've got to think to yourself, have they put Superleggera on as a cover because it's not exciting enough and they're hoping that some idiot premiership footballers will actually buy the name or is the original dbs that they were planning to release so heavy as shit that they thought we need to actually make this light and if it is going to be light put stripped out seats get rid of the leather and get rid of everything in there rather than actually make it comfortable a super light is supposed to be hardcore not comforting And finally, the last point on this, Aston Martin are going down such a design faux pas at the moment because they've had this and the other recent is the Vantage. Now, the Vantage, I know people are going to say, oh, I love that car. I love that car. It sounds good, yes, right? But once you break it down into the fundamentals, it is nothing special. Once you see what it is, right? The Vantage, right? Yes, it's got a cute little rear end again, right? But first off, whose idea was it to give it literally pinholes for headlights and a HDMI connector for a front grille. I, I don't know. The old Vantage was 
great you had a little v2 packed into that little body and it was so fun this thing is so expensive it doesn't go up against like little porsches or audis anymore it's going up against mercedes amg gts and there's this trend of it being so expensive that it's just really not worth it anymore so in my opinion i really think aston martin need to do something because their design language at the moment is not right a decade ago it was on the nose it was banging out fantastic cars it was incredible but now it's just a shell of what it was just to try and cope from model to model so that bloody chad the american business owner can buy a dbs thinks he's like culture because he's got a european sports car so that he can go and bang his secretary so that he hopes she's impressed when really she's looking at the guy with a 488 piece they're thinking i wish i'd gone with that guy because that guy knows what taste is right and aston martin is supposed to be beautiful it's not right the three word logo that it used to say on the instrument binnacle before they ruined it was power beauty and soul power yes it's got it but are not nowhere near enough of what it should be beauty eh, no not beauty and soul they're selling the soul because they've got all these stupid names coming out you've got let's break it down you've got the vantage you've got the dps then you've got the valkyrie the valhalla the vulcan the vanquish aston martin there is more than a sudden letter than v oh look this is just my opinion and in my opinion i think aston martin are doing it wrong because they were so good a decade ago and i don't know what's happened but it's so sad to see a car company like this be diminished in to basically what it is now which is basically a launder scheme for a fast book and trying to impress people with something that it's not anymore but anyway though uh i have been your host mr gage and if you like this video hit that like button if you loved it hit the sub button and turn on post notifications it really does help and i hope to see you in the next video tell me do you like me having a rant like this about a vehicle company or anything that annoys me or do you think i should stick to what works best you know only you can tell me so but anyway though uh have a good night and i will see you in the next video bye bye